Hello and welcome to the Tennessee Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. We have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to specific schools by including your name in your question, or you can ask questions for all of our representatives to answer. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are being hosted for Tennessee students, so we hope that you'll sign up for additional sessions coming up. This presentation and all presentations are being recorded and will be available within about a week's time at strivescan.com slash Tennessee. That's the same website where you register. You can find those additional sessions to sign up for and again, find all those session recordings. I'm excited tonight for all of us to learn and hear from Eastern Kentucky University, Bellarmine University, Southern Illinois University, Western Kentucky University, and Illinois Wesleyan University. So I'd like to welcome and start off with our first school tonight, Eastern Kentucky University. Okay, cool. All right, hi everybody. Um, my name is Yami Pina and I am going to go over a few things on Eastern Kentucky University. I do have a fellow colleague with me, uh, Stephanie Conkle. She'll help answer questions. Um, so let's get started. We do only have six minutes. Okay, so Eastern Kentucky is located in the bluegrass region in the Appalachia foothills and is referred to as Campus Beautiful whenever is referred to as Campus Beautiful. Um, our main campus is in Richmond, Kentucky, but we also have regional campuses in Manchester and Corbin. Uh, our enrollment is nearly 15,000 students, and we are known as the School of Opportunity. That means just about 30% of our students are first in their family to attend college. We have over 100 career-focused programs. Student-to-faculty ratio is 15 to 1. More than 75% of graduates are employed in Kentucky one year after graduation, which is the highest percentage among all public institutions in the state. And then a little bit about our student life. We have over 200 available organizations that you can join. And also if there's something that you wanna make, you just need a few people and you can go ahead and get that started on campus as well. We have fraternities and sororities. We are a division one sport and students get to attend games for free. It's another perk of being a student. Our recreation center is brand new. It has over 130 square feet. Um, it's three basketball courts. It's got an aquatic center and we do have a heated pool. I like to throw that out there. We like to stay warm. Um, we also have a climbing center that is in the shape of a very well known a uh, local spot here called Natural Bridge. It's beautiful, it's really, really cool. And it's also the biggest uh, rock climbing center in Kentucky. We also have a game room that is super, super cool. Um, then we also have a couple of sports intramural and things like that as well. So EKU just launched something really awesome that's gonna start this next semester. We're so, so excited to uh, share this with you all. We do have something called the EKU Book Smart. Uh, that just means that we are going to give you, as a student, books for free if you attend EKU. So you will not have to pay for them at all. And then for admissions, for 2021 admissions, the application is free and live freshman admission standards. You do have to have a 2.5 or higher. Um, and then success first is a 2.0 to a 2.5. And then, um, it is test optional as well, and that's just to help with course placement. And then that's just our little admissions portal there, and you can apply um, following that link. And then there is free Wi-Fi. We do have a lot of cool places to eat, as you can see there. Uh, and then parking is available for freshmen on campus. And we also have something called the Big E Transit that gets students from one place to the other. And we actually have an app that shows you where everything goes. It's really, really cool. Okay, and we have a lot of scholarships. We actually extended our scholarship deadline until April 1st. 
Um, those are for our merit-based scholarships. And then a couple other scholarships have been extended to the 15th of March. Uh, we have diversity scholarships, foundation scholarships, study strong scholarships, trailblazer, governor, um, alumni, and of course, EKU Booksmart. And then there's just a little description. I'd go into more detail, but I know we don't have too much time. Um, but if you have questions, you can ask about all of our scholarships. And then if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for letting me present. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Amy, for sharing about Eastern Kentucky University. All right, our next school up is going to be Bellarmine University. Dia, take it away. Okay, just want to get that unmute. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Screen um, up too. Welcome, everyone. We are so excited for you to be joining us today. Um, again, my name is Dia Garcia. And I serve as the Assistant Dean of Regional Recruitment for Bellarmine. My contact information is listed on the screen. I'll also share that in the chat. So hopefully you know a little bit about Bellarmine already. If you do not, we are located in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's essentially the best of both worlds because we do have that small campus feel, but we're located in a large metropolitan area. Our student population is about 4,000 students and community is something that's really important to Bellarmine. So about 33% of our students are considered first generation. That means that they're the first in their family to attend and graduate college. We also have a very diverse campus as well. Um, students can be involved in over 70 different sports and 22% of our students are involved in learning communities. Our campus is about 145 acres and that does include 50 uh, different buildings. So there are a lot of reasons that students do thrive at Bellarmine University and I'm going to talk very quickly about some meaningful connections, transformative experiences, and successful outcomes. So we start with meaningful connections. So from the first moment that you enter or connect with us at Bellarmine, you are welcome here. And you're going to begin making those meaningful connections. You're gonna connect with your faculty and staff, and you're also gonna connect with other students and then individuals and alumni in the Louisville area. We have lots of different traditions and opportunities for students to be involved on campus. That of course does look a little different right now due to the pandemic but our students are still being able to engage. Listed here are a couple of traditions that we do have at Bellarmine. The image that you see is Ball on the Bell. That's an event that we've held previously and it's a costume party and you can probably see from the image there that the theme was decades night. But again, this is just representation of the fun and connections that we do have at Bellarmine. This past summer, we actually transitioned to Division I sports, so we're really excited to be on that new competitive level. We have 20 different sports teams, 10 of those are men and 10 are women, and we have um, honor societies and other ways to connect as well. You saw previously that we have over 70 organizations, and those organizations lead students to transformative experiences. Those meaningful connections and transformative experiences lead to successful outcomes. As you are exploring different institutions, I really hope that you all uh, take a look at the first destination rates. Ours is at 99%. And that means that 99% of our students are either working full time or they are enrolled in graduate school just six months after graduation. And even in the midst of a pandemic, our graduation rate was still at, our first destination rate was still at 98%. Um, just this past year. Students can apply directly on our website or on the Common App. Our application is free, so we definitely encourage you to apply. We do have rolling admission, and the only required materials are going to be the transcript and a letter of recommendation. You'll hear from lots of institutions that they are test optional right now due to the pandemic, but that's actually something that, that Bellarmine decided prior to the pandemic, because we understand that test scores are not always an indicator of college success. 
And what's a conversation about college without talking about finances? And I'll just briefly say that we have a pledge of affordability to you here at Bellman. And every student does receive a scholarship if they are admitted and attend the institution. Here are some important dates and deadlines that are related to your senior year. That's a lot of information in a short period of time. My final question to you is, are you Bellarmine bound? And I do hope that you are. Thank you so much uh, for listening to this information about Bellarmine. Thank you so much for sharing Bellarmine with us. Our next school today is going to be Southern Illinois University. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Quigley. I'm an uh, missions coordinator here at Southern Illinois University. We are at the very southern tip of Illinois, so we're about three hours from Memphis and about uh, another three hours from Nashville, uh, to put you in some perspective of where we are. All right. Oops. So we're among uh, the top 5% of all higher education research institutions. Um, what does that mean? That means that all our faculty, uh, our, most of our faculty is doing some sort of research. We did some vaccine research here on campus. Um, we have freshmen doing research. A lot of places you gotta wait till you're in like grad school or a senior to do research. We allow freshmen to start doing it their first year here. We have about 10,000 undergraduate students. So we're uh, considered a mid-sized university, uh, not too big, not too small. Even though we have about 10,000 students, our average class size is about 13 to one. So you still get that individualized attention um, that you might be looking for. We have over 200 different programs offered. Some of our popular ones are aviation. Uh, we, we do have an airport on campus. If you wanna become a pilot, that's a top one. Automotive tech is another uh, top one. We have an excellent business school um, and tons of other things. So if you are interested in, in knowing what we have, um, go to our website and you can see what we offer. Our housing is pretty cool. Um, we have an anytime meal plan. So what that means, as long as the dining halls are open, you can show your student ID and you can go eat. Um, we have two different dining halls on campus and they just added a Mongolian grill to one of them. So that's super exciting. Um, this year, every student ended up getting their own dorm room. So they didn't have any roommates uh, and it was suite style. So they only shared the bathroom with one other person. And we also have the biggest dorm rooms in the state of Illinois. So there was plenty of space for everyone. Um, it worked out great with COVID because every student had their own room, came with cable, internet, air conditioning, heat, uh, all, the, all that stuff that you might be looking for. And we also have living learning communities. And what that is, is your entire floor will be people uh, with the same major as you. So say you're an aviation student or you're an education student, your entire floor will be made up of those uh, same type, types of students. So it's pretty pretty cool opportunity. Uh, for our athletics, we are division one. Um, we are we have a spring football season uh, going on right now. We just beat the national champions, uh, North Dakota State, um, clobbered them actually. So we're pretty excited about that. It was their first loss in like four or five years. Uh, so that was super exciting. We're part of the Missouri Valley Conference. We just added women's soccer. So that was um, exciting. And then they're playing their first uh, season now. And then softball and baseball is also happening now. So as a student, you get free tickets to all of our events, uh, which is super fun. Uh, we also have 300 registered student organizations. We have academic, religious, professional, student government, Greek life, anything you can imagine, uh, we have it. A video game club, tons of different stuff to do. We want students to get involved. Um, our, one of my favorite things about SIU is that they offer in-state tuition for everybody in the United States. So as long, you do not have to pay uh, any out-of-state fees or any out-of-state anything, you, you get in-state tuition. 90% uh, of our students receive some sort of financial aid and we give over $10 million in scholarships every year. So uh, we try to make it as affordable as we can. This is the estimated budget um, for 2020. It's looking like 2021 will be pretty close to the same. Uh, so tuition is about 9,000 and fees 5,000 and room and board. Uh, so it brings the total for about $25,000 for the entire year. We do have uh, scholarship opportunities based on GPA. So as, as long as you have a 275 GPA, you will get a scholarship from us and it, uh, the amount raises based on your GPA. We do not require any test scores. We are te completely test optional. Um, so that is not mandatory. Uh, if you do have a 3.8 or higher, um, you can compete for our Chancellor Scholarship, which is a full ride will cover absolutely everything. Just super exciting. 
Um, there is a $40 application fee. We are not part of the Common App. So uh, when you're thinking about applying, you have to go right to our website to apply. Um, like I said, we do not need ACT or SAT scores. It's optional. If you did really well on them, you want to send them in, um, absolutely do. It can only help you. It cannot hurt you at all. Um, we, our application is still open. If you do not know where you want to go next fall, if, and it'll be open for 2022 uh, coming up at the end of spring, early summer. So um, feel free to follow us on our social media. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, um, anything you can imagine. If you have any questions, hit me up in the chat and I'll uh, we'll be more than happy to answer them. So, thank you. Great, thank you so much, Tom, for sharing more about Southern Illinois. Um, we have had three schools present, we have two to go. So this would be a great time, but if you have questions about the schools that have presented or for the schools that are coming up, to not forget to use that Q&A because all of our representatives would really love to share more about their schools. All right, so next up, we're gonna be hearing from Western Kentucky University. Hi, everybody. Hope you guys are doing all right this evening. While well, I'm getting my presentation pulled up real quick, my name is Morgan Terry. Thank you guys so much for coming in and learning about all these other great institutions uh, this evening. We really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy schedule just to come and learn a little bit more about what we can offer you. I'm going to go ahead and get started about WKU. For those of you who may be unfamiliar, we're located in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We're just one hour north of Nashville. And for those of you who may be unfamiliar with Bowling Green, we were recently voted as the best city in the state of Kentucky to live in and also recently voted as a top 10 college town in America. My personal favorite fact about WKU, well, one of two, is that we're actually one of only four schools in the entire country that has been designated as a safe community of America by the National Safety Council. There's a ton that goes into that every year or your safety is going to be paramount here at WKU. My second favorite fact about WKU, and I always want to get this up front out of the way, is that in-state tuition is guaranteed to all Tennessee residents. Nothing special you have to do. That actually makes WKU more affordable than the vast majority of Tennessee state institutions. To give you a quick snapshot of campus, um, our enrollment is about 20,000 students overall, um, and average class size is technically 24. Once you hit sophomore year, though, really start digging into those major specific courses, it's going to be about 15 or 16 or so on average. Your professor is going to know your name. They're going to know where you've come from, what you want to do with your life, what your career goals are, and what your passions are. It's a very familiar environment. It may be not be an environment where you know everybody's name, but you'll be like, oh, I've seen them before in Cherry Hall. They're probably an English major. They're friends with so-and-so, that kind of environment. And when people ask me to describe WKU in one word, that one word that I use is opportunity because there are a ton of them. We have over 150 different academic programs. At this point, it's actually almost 400 different student clubs and organizations. And we have everything that you need in order to be successful. There is no excuse not to be successful here on campus. If you need additional help, all you have to do is ask for it. Free tutoring is available for every student at WKU. Every department has a help center and there's a career services center for the whole institution and then more specific ones for each academic college as well. So there's a ton of programs that I could obviously go in depth on, but there's a couple that I do need to mention, even though we do just have a short amount of period of time. Our nursing program at WKU just a couple of years ago was ranked literally number one overall in the entire country. Our uh, admission rate into graduate level medical programs, so med school, dentistry school, optometry school, PA school, those types of institutions, literally 30 points higher than the national average. Our engineering program has connections with, Chev with Chevrolet. Every Corvette in America is made right here in Bowling Green. And last but certainly not least, I always got to mention the business school, the Gordon Ford College of Business at WKU was recently ranked as a top 20 business school in America as well. And also about 45 of our major programs here at WKU are what we call jump programs. What that means is that certain classes that count for your undergraduate degree will also count for your master's degree at WKU. If you graduate in four years and with one of those jump programs, it's just going to take you one additional year for you to get your master's. So for instance, state tuition, if you wanted to be a finance major, for example, you can come up to a school that's likely close to home for most of you, and you're going to be able to graduate from a nationally recognized school in just four years with one additional year to be able to get your master's. It's just an unbelievable opportunity when that can normally be six or seven years at other institutions. A couple of other additional opportunities I always want to mention. Greek life is a big deal here on campus, um, but you don't have to be in a fraternity or sorority to be able to attend all of their events. It's about 15% of the population. Obviously, we're still in the Bible Belt. Religious clubs and campus ministry opportunities are everywhere, not just in town, but on campus as well. 
no reason to bring a laptop to campus if you don't have one. We have a 24-hour computer lab, all access to all of our fitness facilities for free, and all students can park on campus. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with some of those opportunities, we are a Division I institution as well. We've literally won double the amount of conference championships uh, in our division combined since 2010 than every other school. We're in Conference USA. We always have somebody in the Super Bowl. We have NBA players, MLB players. We're very proud of what we produce on the field. Now, I want to talk about some scholarship stuff real quick because I get asked about this all the time. And as long as you graduate high school with at least a 3.0 unweighted GPA, you're going to be earning some scholarship money. The only, AC, the only ACT factors when it comes to scholarships are going to be for that $8,000 reward right there. And then one other I'll mention shortly as well. I always like to say if finances are a concern, don't let them be. Apply, get admitted, and we'll do whatever we can to make WKU as affordable as possible for you guys. All right. Again, remember, you're getting in-state tuition, so you're already going to be attending WKU at a rate that's more affordable than most Tennessee state institutions. In addition to these, we also have some really strong minority scholarships. We also have the Cherry Presidential Scholarship. This is a very competitive scholarship, but that could be a lot of money there to be able to, uh, to, be able to fund your college career and be able to potentially give you a little extra spending money as well. Then on top of that, we have another 1200 100 single use uh, scholarship opportunities that are available every year. One more time, don't let finances get in the way of exploring the opportunities that we can have for you here at WKU. We're frequently ranked as one of the most beautiful campuses in the entire country. And we love, love, love to show it off. So guys, come check out WKU and the application process. If you're a senior, if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and do it. It's going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes total. The application is basically what's your name, where are you from, what do you want to study, that type of information, no essays, no letters of recommendation, anything like that. We do need to get a copy of your transcript directly from your high school guidance counselor. They can literally email that directly to me. And we do have a $45 application fee, but you can get that waived if you're on free or reduced lunch at your school, if you uh, take a free ACT or SAT through your school, or if you're on Medicaid or Medicare. We'll just need to get some documentation for that. We're also test optional. If you have at least a 2.5 unweighted GPA, if you're between a two and a 2.49 unweighted GPA, then we will need your ACT for admission. But regardless, we still encourage everybody to get that submitted. So just four things. And like I said, you can take care of all this in about 15 to 20 minutes. The application, the application fee or fee waiver, the transcript, and then a copy of your ACT scores. Once we get all that on hand, it's gonna take about seven to 10 business days for us to make an admissions decision for you. We'll notify you by both mail and by email as well. That's my contact information. Again, one more time. My name is Morgan Terry. Email me, call me, don't tweet at me. I hate, I hate Twitter, but let me know how I can help you guys out. Be available in the future. We want to make sure that you guys get all your questions answered and everything taken care of. Again, we really appreciate you spending your evening with us. Thanks again and go Tops. Thanks, Morgan, for sharing more about Western Kentucky. All right, our fifth school of the night will be Illinois Wesleyan. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew Starnes, and I am Regional Mission Counselor for Illinois Wesleyan University. Um, always a pleasure to get a chance to talk uh, with students from the South, uh, particularly Tennessee, because I do live in Tennessee. I'm on the eastern part of the state in the town of Greenville, uh, just east of Knoxville. And again, do get the uh, pleasure of working with families and students that are looking to come um, from the South up to IWU. So tonight I'll tell you a little bit about us and why we were recently ranked number one, uh, top 10 in uh, job placement, uh, number one in Illinois for job placement, and also uh, one of the highest earning um, salaries after graduation uh, in the hidden gem of the Midwest. So we got a lot um, to cover in a very short amount of time. So we'll dive right on in. So with IW, we are a small liberal arts university private university located in Bloomington, Illinois. That's about two and a half hours south of Chicago, uh, about 130,000 people in the town of Bloomington. So it's a good sized community, um, not middle of nowhere USA by any means. Uh, all right. We've got about 1,700 undergrads on our campus. Uh, we are an undergrad only university, so there are no grad students at our school. We've got about 16 students in the classroom on average. So you're not going to see this. You're not going to see the large lecture hall uh, seating. Um, you're going to definitely get a lot less lecture and more discussion, small classroom experiences at IWU. So that's one of the big things about considering um, a smaller school like Illinois Westland. Get those questions answered by your faculty. Um, a lot of good interaction with them and your peers as well. Now, IWU is broken up into three main colleges. We do have our College of Nursing, uh, School of Nursing, 100% job placement for nearly two decades. 
College of Fine Arts. We have a lot of theater interest across the board. So if we have any fine arts students in the house tonight, um, we do have incredible uh, theater programs, um, everything from the BFA to the BA track. We also have our School of Music and Art, uh, tons of opportunities uh, throughout that degree path as well. And then our main College of Liberal Arts contains pretty much the majority of our um, 80 different major minor combinations that we have, everything from physics to neuroscience, uh, pre-med, our biochem program, uh, psychology, international studies. Uh, we just have so many things to choose from, again, what you would expect from a larger university. Now at IWU, we do take a lot of pride in trying to become a more diverse school. Um, so currently we have almost a third of our student population, students of color. And we do have an office uh, devoted to diversity inclusion, um, office of uh, ODI is what it's been referred to a lot of times on campus, but the office of diversity inclusion. We do a lot of things from the Lavender graduation for our LGBTQ plus students um, to making sure that we have pre-orientation programs to help um, students of color come in to make sure they have a place and a voice on campus, a big impact as well. Um, and then also first generation students, we have 30% of our first generation students in this past class. Um, so really, no matter who you are in the background, we want you to know that you have a place and are welcome at our school. Now our campus life, um, I already mentioned, very, very similar to a large university minus the large student population, but we still do have tons of student organizations over 120 plus, um, including sororities and fraternities. So we do have a strong Greek life presence, um, just so many things to get involved with um, across the board. Um, for our athletics, we are D3, so if we have any students in the house that are looking to get recruited, um, we do have 24 different sports for our men and women students. Um, very, very successful. We win so much in our conference um, in the CCIW, um, just so many different opportunities to be able to connect. And even if you don't play sports, um, a great way to get involved and uh, support fellow uh, students on campus um, while they're in their games. And then also on top of that too, we do have esports. So if you have gaming interest, we do have a newer esports program that students can get recruited for and actually earn scholarship dollars for our esports program. Um, now financial aid, um, as with most um, smaller universities, private universities, we never want the price tag to intimidate you. Um, over 95% of our students are gonna receive financial aid. We do have a merit scholarship that does go as high as $32,000 renewable each year and that is based on your overall merit uh, grades and uh, the GPA and scores. Um, so a large portion of tuition usually is covered, especially if you're a student that has great merit and also potentially high financial need as well. Now, the good thing about it is this year, we are test optional. So for our seniors coming in this year, um, we are allowing them to uh, not have to worry about an ACT or SAT, another path for that, and still get scholarship consideration acceptance opportunities as well. So for our application for seniors, our app is still open for the spring. Um, for our juniors, our app will open up later on in August. So that's when our class of 2022 action will start. Our application is free. We are on the Common app. We have our own internal application as well. We are doing tons of uh, virtual events on campus. We've got a big virtual open house coming up this weekend, uh, summer preview days later in July and August. And we are doing individual campus visits safely with families as well. So if you're a junior um, this spring and summer, great time to be able to come up and see the campus, especially if you're on the western part of the state, um, not too far of a drive at all. Um, so again, this is my main contact information up in the top left. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I hope we will get a chance to connect again soon in the future. Um, thank you and hope you all have a great rest of the evening. Great, thank you so much for that presentation on Illinois Wesleyan. Um, well, we do have a little bit more time together tonight before we wrap things up. So as you can see, um, all the representatives who presented, all the presenters are coming back on camera. Thank you all so much. We're gonna just do a little Q&A, get a little more information about each of the schools and some tips uh, to kind of help you on your process. So our first question is going to be to share a favorite event or a campus tradition that just gives a little extra insight into the really special student experience and community that you have on each of your campuses. We'll go in the same order um, as the presentation. So we'll begin with Eastern Kentucky. And then as the representative ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your camera and answer the question and just kind of flow through that way. So 
Thank you so much for getting that started for SEKU. Hi, everybody again. Um, so my favorite event on campus, I actually am an alum. I went to EKU, absolutely loved it. I work there, if that tells you anything. But my favorite thing as a student was the midnight breakfast. Um, we would do it right before finals or midterm. They basically would just have free food for all students at midnight and we would all go into Keen Johnson and it was just a free for all and we would just all eat and stay up and hang out right before finals and it was just really fun. So that's my favorite event and I hope you enjoy it and they have great waffles, great waffles. <laughs> I will keep the theme going and talking about food. I think that that's something very important that you all should be thinking about as you all are picking your college, but uh, be sure to stay away from that freshman 15. But one thing again about Bellarmine is that community is something that's extremely important. So we do have um, a dining hall that's on campus and we collect all of the birthdays of students and you can go to the dining hall um, on your birthday and they'll have a cupcake specifically for you to tell you happy birthday. Uh, my favorite thing is that we do a cardboard um, boat regatta every year on our campus lake so they get to, the students get to make a, a cardboard boat and try to sail it across the lake and whoever um, actually makes it ends up winning so it's kind of a fun tradition we do. Yeah, for WKU, I would say my favorite campus tradition is something that we have called Master Plan. It's basically an extended orientation where students will move in a week before their freshman year starts. We actually will move in all of your stuff for you. And you'll attend different sessions throughout the day where they rotate to where you will have different, uh, you'll have an opportunity to meet literally every other incoming student before classes even start, get to know campus, all of that. And then in the evenings, there's always different stuff that's going on. So like, for example, Cage the Elephant, our WKU alumni, actually, they're from Bowling Green, and they did like a free concert for students just a couple of years ago. Paint parties, glow parties, you know, pep rallies, those sort of things as well. So it's an awesome time on campus. Definitely check that out if you have never heard of Master Plan. Yeah, I think for us, I would definitely say uh, for Illinois Wesleyan, it's the what we call the big show. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do it um, this year, but we'll be hoping to get it back up and running uh, next spring. It's usually at the beginning of year event where basically the uh, whole campus and essentially some of our main buildings are turned into one big party uh, for students to be able to have fun, participate in a lot of games and activities. And it usually concludes with some uh, pretty big concert events come in. Um, usually you're able to secure some pretty decent names to be able to come and, and the students all get, of course, uh, everything included. Uh, for being a student, just a good way to kick back and, and have some fun. I love hearing about all those events. I hope everybody who watches, you know, maybe goes Google, see the pictures, get a little extra insight into uh, what these events look like. Um, for our next question, we're going to keep this one on about your schools because we want to get as much information out there as possible. So an interesting or fun fact, maybe it's one that you really love, but you don't always get to share in the formal admissions presentation, trying to get all of that important logistics and details out there, but something that you think is pretty um, neat uh, to share a little extra info there. So we'll go the same order. So Yemi, take it away. Um, so it's not really like a fun fact, but it's just something really cool that I always like to share about EKU. Um, we actually have an obstacle course on campus. It's free to students. It's really cool. Um, and it actually has like the tight ropes where you go up in the air and you get to climb and everything. And then you actually get to swing once you get at the end of the obstacle and you get to swing to the other side. And it's super, super cool. I did it. I was super scared of heights, but it was so much fun. Uh, and it's like a team building thing too. You can take a group of friends or whatever you want to do, but it's really fun. Um, and it's definitely something you should do and it's free. So, I mean, take advantage of it. <laughs> Very good. Um, so well, one thing that I would share about Bellarmine is related to internship opportunities. So every student is guaranteed the opportunity to have an internship. And I think that that's something that's really important because we understand that one of the main reasons that we even pursue higher education is so that we can graduate um, and be gainfully employed and make positive contributions to society and internship opportunities definitely help students become employed. So at Bellarmine, you'll have that opportunity to have that internship. 
Uh, so one fun fact about SIU that I like is our mascot is the Saluki, um, which is an Egyptian hunting dog. And we actually have live mascots. We have live dogs that come to our events. Uh, if you can pose or pet with them, play with them at our like open houses and stuff. So um, if you want to check out our live mascots, come come visit an open house when we have them and you get to take pictures with them. It's really cool. Yeah, I always say something really unique about WKU is that we are actually home to, oddly enough, a native population of albino squirrels. Um, you can look this up online. They are quite literally everywhere, obviously with the normal squirrels as well. But so there's a lot of things that are called like white squirrel, like at WKU. So we have an organization called White Squirrel Weather. They do the weather for the local region. They also do a storm chase every summer. But uh, white, the white squirrels are kind of everywhere. So if you've never seen it, just Google WKU albino squirrels to learn more. Um, for Illinois Wesleyan, one little fun fact is that we do have an active uh, geothermal um, little hotspot on campus. So that tends to be very popular for students to gather and hang out um, during some of our colder uh, northern winters up that way. So it allows some students to be able to still get outside, have fun, become a little uh, chill spot for everybody on campus. These are all fun facts, fun things. I want to Google and check all this out now too. Um, all right. Well, we are so lucky that we have some amazing admissions pros here today um, who are incredibly passionate about what they do, not just their schools, but really helping students and families navigate this process. So for our last question, I'd like you all to think of some of your best college uh, search process tips. Um, and to be able to share, you know, a piece of advice um, that you would give to anyone watching as they're navigating this process or journey, actually, it should be a fun, it's a fun adventure it's a journey to college. So, um, and we'll go again in the same order. Um, so what I would say is don't uh, be afraid to ask questions. Um, no question is too small. You never know what you're going to learn from it. And don't be afraid to apply to scholarships, even if you think you might not get it you never know. You could, you know, there's so much out there that you can get and there's so much help that universities want to give you to come to the university. So don't be afraid to ask those questions and apply to those scholarships. Um, and yeah, just do that. <laughs> Very good advice as far as asking questions. And I'll add to that and I'll say use your resources. So even on this call right now, you know, we have seven to eight um, university officials who are paid to assist you and to recruit you. So use us as your resource. Again, no question is too small. Make sure that you ask us because we are here to help. Yeah, my advice would be uh, try to visit as many places that you're interested in. Um, I know SIU is open for visits. I saw some other people here, they're open for visits. Try to get to them. Um, it's not, it's never too early. If you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, come and visit. I'm sure all these people here are more than happy to talk to you and tell you about their university. So definitely try to visit as many as you can. Yeah, ultimately, I'd like to just echo what everybody said so far. Definitely tour the institution. It's going to be a place where you're going to live for four years, most likely. So you want to make sure that it feels comfortable. But do not be afraid to ask any question, no matter how stupid you may think it is. All of us are professionals. We face rejection dozens of times on a daily basis. You are not going to offend us with any questions you may have. So don't be shy. Feel free to get to know the representatives that you're going to work with, because ultimately, they just want to make sure that it's going to be a good fit for you and the institution. Yeah, just to pretty much just echo again, uh, get to know your reps, visit any way you can, whether it be virtual, take advantage of it, especially when you can uh, do some good virtual visits uh, on your own couch or bed at home. Yes, I just want to echo what everyone said, you know, really, everyone who's on this call, every college admissions representative you meet, they love what they do, and they really believe in their school, but they really believe in getting students and families the right information and trying to make a challenging or overwhelming process as um, simple or easy and uh, welcoming as possible. So please follow their tips. These are and reach out. Well, we are at the end of our time together. And so I first just want to say thank you to all of our panelists. 
Thank you so much for sharing not just the facts and figures about the schools, the logistics of admissions, but just the passion you have for the students' opportunities on campus, in the classroom, and out of the classroom. Um, I hope that everyone who's watched today or is watching this recording is feeling really excited and inspired and wants to um, reach out, ask questions, learn more, and dig in um, as you go through your college search journey. When you all close your window, there's gonna be a link to a very quick four question survey and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide for us. And again, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted for Tennessee students. We hope that you will head to the same website where you signed up for this one to sign up for the additional upcoming sessions. Also at that same website, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as all session recordings. The website again is strivescan.com slash Tennessee. Thank you everyone. Best wishes on your college search process and thank you for taking the time to learn tonight. Goodbye.